We are here at Toys R Us in Ontario, Canada, and we're going to take you on a toy hunt. I'm here with my friends DK, A, hey. and the homie Mo. Yo. My name is Kevin, aka Toying Around. Let's go inside, meet my friend, and look for some toys. Hey, so thanks for tuning into episode three. Just wanted to let you know that on this shoot, my microphone's completely bugged out and I had to use my in-camera's mic as the audio backup. And as a result, some scenes can be really quiet, but I tried my best to recover it and make it enjoyable. But to be honest, it seriously bummed me out for a few days and I didn't even want to put this out at first, but I had too much fun to let this go to waste. So I hope you can stick around and enjoy the video. I'll see you at the end. Business. Uh, I didn't have time to write your name. What are you holding? I, I'm not really. Wow. Uh, I don't know. Hey, what's up, Andy? Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, it's a. Why I chose that thing. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the show. What's up? Who wants to talk? Uh, my name is Nigel Downer. I am a uh, actor, improviser, uh, comedian, um, nerd, geek, uh, collector, uh, and also uh, fashionista. People know me from uh, the Second City main stage. I was there from 2011 to 2013. I wrote four shows there, also uh, performed in those four reviews. Uh, you also see me in a web series called Bit Players on CBC Gem that is currently running six episodes that I and my co-star, co-writer Chris Siddiqui wrote. Also on Amazon Prime and- Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, also, Bit Players is on Amazon Prime uh, in the States and in the UK. Go watch it, my people overseas. So I'm into figures uh, big time now. I'm also into comic books. I love collecting that as well. I also collect hats. Toys R Us. Yeah. Um, do you frequent the store for your hunting? And if you do, where do you usually start? Yes, uh, I 100% frequent the store. Uh, not this one, this location in particular. So I'm excited to, to check this one out. Yes. Uh, I know they're roughly all the same, but you never know what you're going to get. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, usually I start over by the Specialty kind of counters. This reaction stuff, yeah. I mean, I love it. The last two people who have been on, they're huge fans. Yeah. Do you have any any connection? This is bringing any feelings towards towards your collecting. Yeah, yeah, man. Like yeah. yeah, mostly, uh, mostly the GI Joes. I think if if I was to go to hierarchy, it'd probably be the Joes, uh, and then the Transformers. Uh, it might be a toss-up between the Rangers and the Turtles. Three and three-quarter stuff. Like, we're in, like, a, a different, same circles. Yeah, some yeah, stuff yeah. that we collect, a lot of 112 scale. Yeah. But I recently, like, just fallen in love with three and three-quarter, how these look, the nostalgia. And, and when you get one in hand, you're actually holding it. It's, like, it's just something fun about it. I mean, you have a whole display, a yeah. whole row of them. It's, it's a whole different view. See, and, you know, that's what I admire about the about your show and about your what you do is because I am a guy, you've inspired me to take these things out of the box. I've got like tons of figures in box. Yeah. But you, the way when you take them out and you just, you're not even messing around, like you just go right into the joint. Yeah. You're just like, crack, 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 crack. And then you're like, hey, check this out guys, crack. Like you're just into it. And I'm about that life. So shout out to Baxter Stockman. Uh, we got the white guy here, and there's a ton of them on the shelves. And <laughs> if you turn it into the brother, like the modern day Baxter Stockman, I'm telling you, out of stock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, anyways, this is some of the most iconic toy imaging of the 90s. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's been ever released. It just, like, with the blast in the back, I know the original, the OG is like digital, right? This is more painted kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, regardless, when you have the figure card on the back that you can cut out yeah. and you can collect, you can file away like that. Did you do that? Yeah, you? man. Yeah. yeah, like that was the stuff right there. Like even Destro's face specifically because I got this guy in hand. Like that animated Destro, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the yeah, brother. I think right their there. stuff is focused on cartoon versions, the yeah. cartoon looks of things. Here's the thing, man. <sighs> so me and my bestie, all right? Uh, shout out to John Henderson. Uh, we've been best friends since grade six. and. We used to play G.I. Joe every day after elementary school. Go back to his play, and he had a ton of them. And I brought, like, you know, a smattering of options. Just a smattering of options. And 
So we would play, and what we would do is we would take the regular Joes. I used to use um, Red Dog from uh, Sergeant Slaughter's Marauders. So I'm I'm lost beyond uh, I'm a school the Storm Shadow. Yeah. School, well, yeah. Of course, and uh, yeah. Snake Eyes. And, yeah. Okay. Anyways, Sergeant Slaughter had this, this uh, gang of, of ruffians. Yes. Uh, anyways, so Red Dog was one of these guys. So what we used to do is we used to use like the regular kind of street level looking Joes, and then we would pretend that they would get in, they would do a quick change and then change into another figure like a Snake Eyes figure. Also, that's his suit. So when he goes to do these missions, he okay. change into these suits. So we played. We used to play this for like a couple years. And we were really into it, and then there was one time I guess we just got we just got grown in like grade. I think it was like grade eight ish. We went back to this place. We were gonna do next like storyline yeah and uh we brought up the figures and we just like made eye contact with the, with the picture and we're like do you want to play this he's like, <laughs> he's like no and i was like he was you and i was like no oh, put man. them back never play with you really? just, just this one moment. cold turkey boom just like that like just a, like, like that. A, a switch was flipped yeah and it's like do you want to go talk about girls yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like no let's get out of here yeah should we should we Maturing now? Do you want to do something that's for older boys? Okay. <laughs> and then when, when 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 was that switch switched off? We're like we're back into this. Oh man! Uh, couple, oh, well, never for me. And I, I never played with the figures, but I still like bought them. Right. So then for for me. Uh, Wait. So when when you were like, do you want to play this? And then John said no. I put he left, side. and then you're like. Yeah. And then he was like, "Hey, are you coming out of my room yet?" I was like, oh, <laughs> You're still in his house. <laughs> so yeah, so then we stopped playing, and I didn't really collect at the time. It wasn't really collecting them. Yeah. In the nineties, you were just you were just eating them up, you were just grabbing them and, and playing and having a great time. Um, and then I just had a bunch of figures all over the place, like in my parents' place, um, which my dad ended up giving away. I found out recently. Oh no! Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. What kind of stuff did you have? Uh, tons of GI Joes. Uh, I had a couple turtles. Uh, I had the original um, DC, like uh, uh, Super Friends, so like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern was my guy. Green Lantern is one of my favorite heroes. Oh, wow. um, shout out to John Stewart. And um, yeah, so they just all got mask. I don't know if you remember that I mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're 80s yeah, guy. Yeah. I think yeah. Mask Super Seven. If anyone's gonna do like a, a Mask remake, I think I can see it. You gonna grab anything from here? Anything uh, speaking to you, calling out your name? Uh, not yet. God, yeah, not yet. I'm one of those guys. This dog, don't even get me started on the Green Ranger dog. Don't get me. God, yeah, don't most even. Most powerful flute in the universe. Yeah. Plays two songs. Yeah, <laughs> two two bangers, like two tracks that are just remixed. So I was a little older when Power Rangers came out, but again, it's that idea of that fantasy thing, man. Like I love that there's that quick change and then the heroes, and obviously Zach, you know, the Black Ranger was my guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so interesting to watch a brother uh, translate break dancing it's into a... kicking putty. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Ah, shit, it's gas. The parachute pants. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, like not, not in the Got over here. All right. It's got a little key chain on it, so I can either put it on my keys or I can take that off and use my action figures in the Monopoly. Classic, you know? Your boy's about Baltic Avenue. Give me that cheap, <laughs> give me that, give me that cheap property that you're always going to land on, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Baltic, and then, you know, mad condos going up on Baltic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have some Joes here. And now we're talking. Okay. Have them all. Have them all. Yeah. It's going to be a quick show because Nigel has everything. All right, let's call it <laughs> gift and a curse. This is my dupe. Now, if you haven't caught on yeah. to the theme yet, if you haven't caught on to the theme yet, uh, I have a big like, I have a big affinity for all the brothers in the '90s era of cartoons. Is he? Yeah, for sure. There's no doubt. You can you can ask anybody. You can ask any Transformers fan and be like, okay, tell me, tell me if there's a black eye in yours. Tell me who that black eye would be. Jackson. <laughs> That's right. Right. And uh, Thundercats. Uh, Thundercats would be Panthro, 
Uh, yeah. Who, who are you kidding? Uh, Silver Hawks, brother called Hot Wing. Guys, let's not go too deep, all right? But uh, Jazz was my guy. Very stereotypical, but just like, but just like, he's, he's a, and he's my favorite car. I'm about that Porsche life. I'm a Porsche 911 guy. That's well, I mean, like, if you look at Star Wars, the the Neimoidians are very Asian. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah like, what? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> what? What did you say? I just never seen somebody actually imitate them and do a very good job, man. Yeah. You need, you need to hang out with more Chinese people. You know. We're, we're breaking down barriers. Right? Yeah, the beauty yeah. of multiculturalism. Yeah. That's the beauty of Canada, right? Uh, Where else are you going to see this? You know, you're all thinking it. Yeah, you're yeah. all thinking it. Yeah, don't even know. Bit players. Yeah. Please let people know a little bit about the show and what it's all about. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, it, was so, it was so great to, you know, to connect with you. And then uh, I remember one of the conversations we had. And I was like, oh yeah, man, I can't wait to watch it. And you're like, dude, I'm I'm already like three episodes deep. Like you you just went in and yeah. finished the whole thing. So Bit Plays is a web series that uh, myself and Chris Siddiqui wrote. Chris Siddiqui is the uh, creator, and he was actually I was actually his understudy at the Second City Main Stage. So that's how we met, yeah. and we actually really solidified our relationship over uh, movie scores. That was oh, wow. that was the, the 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 tie that bound. Yeah. So he approached me with this idea. He's like, listen, man, I got this idea. Of these two, these two dudes who were, who were friends when they were kids, and you know, one's an actor, a struggling actor, wanting to get back into it. The other one's just, you know, riding his coattails. What do you think? I was like, yeah, man, anything to do? That? Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Let's do it. And then years passed. So oh, wow. I proposed the idea. Years passed, and then we reconnected on that idea, and we're like, seriously, let's do it. So uh, he came to me with like a two sheet, which is like eight and a half by eleven, two eight and a half by elevens, with the breakdown of what he wanted the episodes he thought and like character breakdown and we just went into it uh, my background is also graphic design so i went to college for so i took that and then i redesigned that we wrote some more ideas for episodes and then we found a production company shout out to larue and uh, they were like we're on board we met with a couple people we met with a couple people and um cbc was like hey we love it we originally pitched it as a tv show but like we love it we think it would fit our uh fit our broadcasting uh, more so if it was on the web, okay. it was online. We're like, sure, let's do it. It's currently airing uh, CBC Jam uh, in Canada and then Amazon in the UK and the US. And we actually won a couple of CSAs for it. So Canadian, Canadian Screen Awards, which nice. is best writing and best web series in 2020. So it was uh, it was a journey. It was probably one of the, if not one of the best experiences I've, I've, ever, I've ever had. Star Wars. Yep. You were getting really hyped. Who was it? This guy right here. Yeah, give me this. Oh, yo, it's the only one. It's the only one. <laughs> we saw that earlier. Yo, you have no idea how happy this makes me. Oh, my gosh. This is the Hasbro Black Series yeah. uh, droids version of Boba Fett. Oh, yeah, huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, so I have the, uh, have the R2 uh, and, you know, and 3PO. Yeah, and 3PO. And so I recently just saw this. Somebody posted in one of the, yeah. one of the fan groups or whatever. Somebody posted that time in that TRU. And I was like, man. And I actually went to one two days ago. Mm. I was like, oh, let me just check. I didn't find it. I was like, that's fine. Um, but it's here. Yeah. I think they had the three and three quarter that just came out. And then this is the, the six inch yeah. version. Yeah. They have some of the, the smaller ones here. Yeah. Dude, you know, a lot of people love this for the nostalgia of it. Yeah. Was this your role? I was a big fan of the Droid show. Oh, really? So, like, yeah, so, like, knowing that this was out there, and now they're, they're doing the fan service and hooking us up with this guy. I mean, but Star Wars is out of control now. Star Wars yeah. is just, like, uh, another level now. So this is nice to see, yeah. yeah. Can you do it? Seeing uh, the Purge Troopers. Yeah. That was not film. <laughs> it was. Uh, Electro Staff Purge Trooper from Jedi Fallen Order. But there have been purge troopers showing up in Kenobi. Sorry, but when this airs, you should have seen the series by now. Um, so I'm going to need some of these. There's going to be new Kenobi figures coming out. Same with the uh, scout trooper. Uh, this is my loophole. I said only Favreau verse for three and three quarter. Interesting. Just because I don't, I shouldn't get into another scale when I collect so much black series. Do you look for that kind of stuff? The articulation. 
Like, do you do, like, posing and photography? Yeah, and so any of that stuff? that's the newest thing. Like, that's why I got into a lot of figures, too. Not only nostalgia, but yeah. because uh, I'm a big amateur photographer, so I love the idea. I've been following a lot of, or, like, very key uh, action figure uh, photographers. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm not going to try and mimic what they're doing, because they're doing something like, this is their full-time job. Right. But, like, just the simple poses and the fight scenes, and then I can, I'm really good, again, because of my craft and my background, with, like, photoshopping things out or putting them in or whatever. Yeah. So I can't wait to actually get into it. I haven't really gotten in deep yet, uh, but with your help uh, with enabling. No, no, you've enabled. I've got a camera now. Uh, oh, okay. Another, another camera that I don't need. Wait, did uh, you get the ZV-1? Yeah, man. Points. Points. <sighs> <laughs> Legends, a staple. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like it's almost the gateway. And then, where's Marvel Legends? It's very high, very high up there. Uh, I was waiting for you to finish talking so I could so I could aggressively tell you. Like Kevin, shut up! Yeah, I want to talk. Like God, let me talk about the Marvel Legends, dude. Uh, no, but it, it's very high because it is a gateway, right? Like it is. The the figures are so accessible and they're also so well, like generally. Yeah. And um. Because they're so in your face, like with the movies and with the branding, like it's just, it's very easy to just come into a toy store or a comic book store and just see them there. And now you're getting such a variety of, of different figures mm-hmm. from from deep cuts, from like, you know, comic book arcs that were like from the 90s or the yeah. 80s or whatever. So it's, I, I love them. What? Yo! This is the Marvel's Ragnarok, yeah. which is awesome because it's kind of like the uh, 80th awesome. anniversary yeah. Thor. So they have to have a Mjolnir spinning effect. So not only does it look like his iconic move, spinning, yeah. spinning Mjolnir to fly, but you can actually, I don't know if you, I didn't know this, but if you hold the handle, it actually spins, it spins. Yeah. Like, a, like a fidget spinner. Yeah. So Remember those? Yeah, wasn't that like... Two years ago, five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in the before times, but it was recent. Yeah, wow. We're talking about stuff from like the eighties. You're like, remember <laughs> fidget spinners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Remember the 2017 fidget spinners? And even the inscription, like you can read the inscription on the hammer, on yes. the, all the hammers. Oh, so the spinning one and the regular one. Yeah. Well, Which technically, if it's spinning so fast, so fast, yeah. it'd, be, it'd be blurry. True. Flast. So fast. Yeah. If it's if for spinning so fast. And me. <laughs> Thumbnail. Nice. Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Myself, I was like Mighty Morphin. And then I didn't even finish all of Mighty Morphin. Okay. Then grew up, I guess. But in the last few years, because of the comics, I got back into it yeah. heavy and yeah. have a lot of the stuff. Where's Power Rangers? Same. Uh, I've never, it's never really left my zeitgeist, so it's always been in, in top of mind mm-hmm. somewhere. And then they did these, the, the mashup with, you know, the Turtles and the Rangers. Like, you got to be kidding me, man. Like, this is, the, it's, it's a dream come true. So I pre-ordered these but as soon as they came out. I got them. Uh, and then this here is the latest. Like, you got, you got to be kidding me. Like, the, the the figure is so good. The, you know what I really love too? Again, my graphic design brain. Mm-hmm. The box art. The colors pop. This is a perfect green for this. Like yeah. it's, it's the perfect green for, for a toy on a shelf. Yeah. And, and like if you look at everything else. And yeah. all the other box art is fine because obviously Tom Whalen, fantastic artist. He was on the channel before. But this green that just, if you're, if you're looking through this, it just stands out. Yeah. Morphed Shredder, but he basically is Shredder. He stole the dragon power coin, has the powers of the Green Ranger, yeah. and uh, that's his new costume. This is a deluxe figure. But oh, you, you said you got the turtle. I've right got here. the whole. I've got the whole wave. I've got the whole. Got the whole. See this? The whole. This thing right here. <laughs> this whole thing. Bam! Look at that. T. Bam! For what? Turtles. You were too late. You were too late. I spelled it out for you. No T. Nice. Yeah. But I'm thinking like yes. See, I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about either him. I need a villain. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's it's this. Yeah. How much does it weigh? Fuck. Sketch. Set. Set. Um. Yeah, so. Oh. I mean, I'm 
Yeah. Oh, and he's even got like cool you do, like power pose of holding the stuff that we're getting. Just like, yeah. And this is this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Ah. Stretch. Yeah. We're on an episode of Titans. Yeah, it was season one. Yeah. Yeah, season one. Uh, yeah, I lost my mind when I got that part. Um, you know, I was a cop in a, in a local, like, you know, a deputy in a, a local police uh, precinct kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, interacting with the main character, with Robin. That he wasn't in Robin form. Um, but you just did Grayson at the time. But it was great. It was, it was really cool. Which, the irony in that is, Dick Grayson, aka Robin, aka Nightwing, aka was Batman and then went back in. Yeah. You understand the history. Okay. history. Uh, my favorite DC character. Oh, nice. Uh, he's one of those guys. I just like the sidekick, man. There's something about, there's something about, like, Batman's cool. I get it. He's, he's brooding. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I, that's more of a new age Batman, but I get it. But there's something about, you know, Dick growing up and then becoming his own person mm -hmm. and wanting to, like, cut that off and see if he can make it on his own. Right. New costume, new outlook, you know. I just, I love that idea. I love that concept. And I've always thought of myself as that kind of uh, a character. It's kind of a sidekick. I'm there when you need me. Uh, but then eventually, I'm going to break out and do my own thing. Anyways, welcome to my new show, Hunting Around. I'm the new host. Of, uh, <laughs> see how I did uh, <laughs> cut, 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 cut. No, 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 no. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Hot Wheels Premium. They're all, all bad vehicles. vehicles. So, Adam West Batmobile, Keaton Batmobile, Where's Justice League, here? the Bat, and the Batman Batmobile. This is a pretty cool set. Yeah, this is a fun set. I'm really thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm gonna throw it in the car. I'm gonna do that classic thing though. See this one? This one's been handled. So, you know, you gotta go. You gotta go in deep. You know what I mean? It's like it's like getting groceries. Back. You know what I'm saying? Getting groceries. The one in the yeah. back is the freshest. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody ever get grabs the, the front one. Uh, if, you buy, if you go to the grocery store and you grab the first one on the shelf, yeah, that's uh, a, you're a jump. Yeah, that's a that's a youth thing. You don't like fresh then. Hey, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Despite the audio issues, we had a lot of fun and I didn't want this footage to be, you know, left to waste. But, you know, we got a lot of cool stuff. Nigel uh, here, he picked up some of the miniature board games and arcade games that he's going to do with his toy photography. The Boba Fett Droid Series 6-inch, you know, I give him a thumbs down there because it's Boba Fett. Got the premium, premium set of Batman vehicles from Hot Wheels. It's a pretty dope set and uh, I'm a little bit sore that I don't have the sound effects for this part right here. You can see that was epic. He also got the Perantis head. I got myself some more vintage collection. The uh, green shredder, the morphed shredder, I got that as well. And of course, Nigel was the nicest dude. He actually has a hat case. But inside of the hat case, he actually bought a BitPlayer's hat for me, an extra one for uh, DK. So that was super nice of him. And uh, this is a great episode, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as you can, even with the sound problems, but I want to give a big shout out to Super7 who sent over this Avery O'Neill t-shirt that I'm wearing this episode, and of course Toys R Us and Nigel and my crew and everyone involved. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please, if you like what's going on here, like, comment, share, subscribe. All that helps and it helps reach more people on YouTube and helps recommend the videos. And thank you so much. Keep watching and keep toying around. Peace!